Good morning. I'm Norma Cowley and welcome to my YouTube channel. I thank you for watching. Today we're exploring the seven symbols of the tarot of the higher account of the tarot numbers 15 to 22. Now, I just want to say this is not a workshop. This is what I discovered was the steps that we take in our own philosophical and spiritual journey. The first seven denote how of the necessity of getting a teacher, of learning about universal love, making a commitment to your spiritual journey, um, and learning about yourself, because that's first and foremost, to find out what you're comprised of, what makes you work, and then getting to a point where you're ready to move out into the world, which is the next seven, where you begin to experience what I call the laws and the lessons. And I created what I call laws because of something that's consistent. And this journey is not always the easiest one because we are learning again in a different way. And so we come to understand um, the law of change, the law of cause and effect, the law of acceptance, perhaps the hardest one as humans, what we have to learn. And then we come again to a sense of a, realize, of a place where we've come to a realization. At the number seven, we, it's called like uh, you've got an understanding and you're given a square on your chest. So you've come to the squareness, the, the basics, the earthiness. And then the temperance, which is number 14, you come to the element now in the middle of that square is a triangle. So now you understand more of the spiritual laws that are applying to the learning. Now you come to the last seven. Now I call the seven the realization because this is where everything, you come from face to face with everything. And it starts off right away from leaving that wonderful temperance where everything is in balance. You've got your goal out there as a, as a sun in the background. You've got a pathway. Yes, it's got a few little breaks in the pathway, but you feel like you're in command. You, you've, you've, you understand and understanding is huge. If you understand something, it begins to work really, really well. And so now you move into what we call the devil symbol. <laughs> Now, when you look at the devil, and I know my clients, when they see that, they go, oh my goodness, because it's all black background and there's the big devil sitting there. And the, and the two people that are in front are very similar to number six. Now, if you think of 15, five and one is six. So this is another aspect of that lover's symbol right in the first row. But now we've allowed our emotions get to most of us. Now, often this goes along with often other depressive symbols, but it can be a lot of things we're all absorbed with and emotionally tied up in. And what I love about the tarot, that's one of the things that is, I have kept working with it all these years, is that it always shows you a way out. And in the devil, it's about taking the chains off, unhooking yourself from what you're holding on to so tightly and wanting it to be that way where you're actually restricting yourself and not allowing yourself to be able to work in an effective way. And again, life itself, because if you choose not to release yourself, life will do it for you. And that's the tower. Now the tower was one symbol that took me a long time to really understand. And finally I did some really deep meditation on it. And what it told me was that it always added out of the sky, out of the blue comes this lightning. Now the lightning is shaped like a W and the W is on the Hierophant, which is number five, the Hierophant's uh, crown that he's got. It's also um, on the, in the Ace of Cups, there's this W. And it's, uh, it's the union between the spiritual and the material worlds. And so the, Lightning comes in, the crown, which is on this tower, gets thrown off and it's all on fire and two people fall out. One person is falling away backwards, still holding on to this crown on his head. The other one doesn't have a crown on his head, is working, is falling forward and it has a yard of light in, in, in between his hands. Now that represents number one of the higher arcana cards, which is the magician all things are possible so here we here we go now on that side on the lower side of the tower there are uh, 12 yards of light which is the law of acceptance number 12 
we must accept what's happened and then we let go. Letting go is such a huge part. Very often in our life, we have to let go. Let go of beliefs, attitudes, people, situations, letting go. Not the easiest thing again, but something which we often have to do sometimes, many times. And then as you rebuild, because it's all about rebuilding, it has 10 yards on the other side of the tower showing the wheel of fortune, putting things into action. I believe that's, I believe I have that in the right way, right order. Now, when you're rebuilding, you come into another place of understanding, which is represented by the star. Now the star has two jugs of water. Oh, by the way, she's beautiful. She's naked. She's kneeling on the ground, but one foot is on a, this pool of water and she's pouring quite a lot of other water back into that pool. In her left hand, she's pouring another water out, but it's going onto the earth, the five streams. And one of those is moving back into the pool because it's about energy, it's how much you put out. There comes a place where you give to others. And what happens a lot in our world, we know we need to give, but then we think if we give to A, we should be getting from A. But that's not how it works. You give to A and maybe Q gives you back or Z or something. It comes from somewhere else. So it's like it's like knowing that. It's no, having no expectations. You just give because you know. But at the same time, you'll notice she's looking after herself. There's a beautiful big yellow star. There's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white stars representing a chakra system, representing the source. So here she is, a star. Remember, star shines on its own light, the headdress of the charioteer. Now, when we know what we know, we often hit a wall because we get so convinced that we're right. And that's when we come into number 18, the moon. Now, Number 18, the moon, again, was one that I had a lot of trouble with. And what I, what I found was whenever I felt I was right, you know, that righteous feeling you can get, this is the way you got to do it. This is how it is. Uh, the moon would come up, which is not really good for me to have that sitting there because now I'm from New Zealand originally, and we had crayfish down there, but here they call them lobsters. So you've got a lobster coming out of a lake onto a pathway through two pillars, which the last we saw of those was in the death symbol, number 13. And we've got a wolf and a dog, conscious mind and subconscious mind, baying at this moon. But between these two pillars, there's 18 yards. Guess what No number 18 is? It's the devil. And so consequently, what happens is that you are now not, it's almost like overbelieving and not really looking. So you've got your sub emotional self. It is an emotional card and it's a, it's a self-deception card. And I, I really do find is when I believe that I am correct, that I am super correct is when I, I used to say, when I think I'm the most right is when I'm actually the most wrong. <laughs> Only because my motive for what I was believing and doing wasn't in right alignment. And if I continued, I would end up back at the devil, have to come through the tower and the star again, and be confronted once more with that aspect of myself. If I can pull that into an understanding and be aware of that and not to let the emotion or my desire to be right get in the way i move into the sun and the sun is a as a young child on a white horse no saddle arms open wide red feather crown with sunflowers lots of sunflowers lots of beautiful sun red big flag again leaving behind the past and moving forward and this represents the humility we need to have and be like a childlike be aware that the force of the universe works through us and that's what humility is about because when we have that childlike and that humility and that awareness that we are a part of that greater force it makes a huge difference and, and so it becomes really, really aware of the difference of where we're heading and where we're going. And then we come to number 20, which is the 
acceptance of that beautiful divine force that is there the knowingness that we're connected and here you have a male child female and a reflection of that all of responding now the god judgment doesn't mean we're being judged it means that we're accepting it's like um it's like when we don't it's like when we die basically we need to accept the light the love and we have to be prepared to accept that love when you do not feel value within yourself when you do not love yourself well and a universal love comes to you i tell you it's not easy to accept so you want to do all this work this is what this is talking about you want to do all this work now so that you can just embrace that love and become a part of it and so that you can accept that element that lovingness that that is there which basically is absolutely no judgment at all but only love and then when you become a part of that still in your body and still able to recognize you come into the world the symbology of the world is i find really significant first of all you've got a figure it looks like a female and they say she's a i always have problem with the word but you know male female it was one in in front of a beautiful big <clears throat> laurel wreath of a tree in the wheel of fortune there were four fixed signs in the corners that had books because they were learning now they, they don't have books here in the magician he has one wand which he's going as above so below now she has two wands totally balanced she has the green the, sorry it's not green the purple scarf from the the angel in the in lovers wound around her showing that she has all her three minds together now today people don't talk too much about the three minds we have which is the conscious subconscious and superconscious but i when i was studying that was that was really quite a big part of what we were learning about how the subconscious worked and how the conscious worked and how the superconscious worked and the alignment of such and this is what the world represents and so she's got and oh yes i mustn't let it leave out the legs from the um hanged man which is showing the acceptance so she has attained she has everything there and then it's just like stepping out she steps into the fool now the fool when you lay all the symbols out and you put the fool at the end i don't usually put it in the beginning i put it at the end because i don't believe we have true a faith like right off the bat because that's what the fool represents who's going to walk off the side of a cliff the dog representing the world going don't do that <laughs> and you're saying yes but i'm doing that and there's a lot of symbolism he's got the staff from the hermit he's got the red uh, feather from the sun he's got the white rose from um death symbol he's gaily dressed um and he stepped and also the the mountains too in both the hermit and the judgment symbol and he's stepping off the cliff because he has faith sometimes in life we just have to step out there and, and and we know because we know knowing this is interesting to know with humility is where we want to be some people we know and we're kind of a little bit arrogant about it so we don't really want that anyway he steps back through every symbol because every step that you take a little bit of faith goes with you and what happens with this is that when you reach the world and you come to the to the full again you step back into the magician a little different vibration and you're going to learn again in a different way and you go around again so it's almost like well where do i stand on this 22 symbols <clears throat> excuse me of learning so that's one reason i love the tarot not only does it explain why we're here what we're doing how to make it work um that's why i use the rider weight deck right to put the color in but arthur wayne and pamela coleman smith put the symbolism together what i again i like it because it has distance so when you go to read it you've got distance you can see where it's heading it always gives you a way out it never leaves you stuck unless you want to be of course and then some people do choose to do that and so <clears throat> that ends this journey and next week i'm going to be back talking about how our thinking works and how everything comes together um if no oh i need to say years ago i was invited to write an article for it was 2003 i believe for a tarot magazine and i wrote a story that was way too long 
So I had to sh cut it down to fit for the, for the calendar. It was not a magazine, pardon me, it was a calendar. But I kept the story, original story, and I still have that. And if anybody would like that and they want to contact me through my website, www.normakawi.com, you can, you can email me through there requesting a copy of the, uh, the PDF uh, of the Higher Arcana Journey. I'd be very, very happy to send it to you. And I really want to thank you for tuning in. I want to thank you if you're a subscriber. Thank you so much. Really, that's great. And until next time, we'll be back next Wednesday. And oh, just remember, on Sunday, somewhere in there in the morning, I, a live stream, a Sunday thought. So thank you very much for watching.